Well, President Trump is hosting a social media summit at the White House today, but it doesn't appear that executives from Facebook or Twitter were invited. CBS News correspondent Nicole Killian joins me now from the White House and here on set, CNET senior producer Dan Patterson. So, Nicole, to you first, if Facebook and Twitter reps won't be there, do we know who exactly will be? Well, we actually don't have a guest list. Uh, we do know for the most part, though, uh, through our own reporting, that uh, we expect a number of uh, conservative pundits, uh, lawmakers, and uh, various organizations uh, to be here at the White House today. We don't have a firm count on the numbers, uh, but essentially uh, these are groups who have expressed concern about a potential bias online, uh, who are concerned uh, that some, for instance, uh, conservative activists have been banned on social media platforms. And so uh, that is something that they are looking to discuss uh, with this president here at the White House today. And Nicole, do we know what exactly the point of this summit is and what the Trump administration wants to come from it? Well, you know, the president made pretty clear in some tweets this morning uh, what will be discussed. He essentially lashed out at social media, saying that the focus of today's summit will be on, quote, tremendous dishonesty, bias, discrimination, and suppression practiced by certain companies. Now, he didn't call out a specific companies here, but he did go on to say that we're not going to let them get away with it much longer. Now, a White House official tells us that earlier this year, uh, they launched a tool to allow Americans of different uh, background uh, to weigh in on how they've been affected by bias online and that today's discussion is really designed to engage some of these uh, digital leaders uh, about the effects of social media. You know, Dan, Nicole weighed in about how the president, you know, he's long complained that conservatives had really been silenced on some of these platforms. Is there evidence to prove the president's point on that? No. Nothing. Look, these are claims and assertions. Uh, there is no evidence. And in fact, when we've asked not just the president, but many of the president's followers, there is no evidence. When we talk to the social media companies, they give us different versions of, hey, look, we are a private company. This is just like if you were to walk into a bar, you have the right to drink a beer at that bar. You have a right to even get drunk. But the second you start harassing other patrons, the bar will ask you to leave. We are very similar. Now, I want to push back on that a little bit because these companies have also uh, inconsistently enforced their policies. Mm -hmm. However, there is not one shred of evidence to support the rhetoric, again, the rhetoric that the president has been pushing, that there is shadow banning or that any particular group has been singled out. Have we, you know, there have been some big names that have been excluded from this. Have we heard from any of the media executives? Have any of these social media platforms, their folks weighed in about being excluded? Uh, publicly, we've heard very little. Privately, uh, these companies feel as though the term social media summit is itself propaganda. This is not a social media summit. This is a gathering of the president's associates and his supporters, and it is designed to amplify voices that have been in the past historically associated with extremist mm -hmm. and sometimes conspiratorial points of view. It's fascinating also that the, the courts weighed in saying that the president can't block some of these people who he has on Twitter. Yeah, well, the courts have said that certain types of behavior uh, when it comes to uh, public activity from public uh, figures like the president or elected figures uh, is simply not allowed. All right. I want to thank you both, Nicole Killian and Dan Patterson, for joining us.